Nephrotic syndrome is defined by the presence of nephrotic range proteinuria, hyperlipidemia, hypoalbuminemia, and edema. Nephrotic syndrome exhibits a peak incidence between two to six years with a higher prevalence in males and an overall incidence of two to four has 100,000 children in the UK. Notably, it is six times more common in the Asian population. Clinical signs of nephrotic syndrome include periorbital edema, notably prominent upon waking and considered the earliest sign, as well as scrotal or vulval, leg and ankle edema. Additionally, manifestations encompass ascites, breathlessness due to pleural effusion, abdominal distension, and susceptibility to infections such as peritonitis, septic arthritis, and sepsis. The causes of nephrotic syndrome can be categorized as primary, with minimal change nephropathy being the most common at 80%, focal glomerulosclerosis at 15%, membranous nephropathy at 5%, and hereditary nephropathies at 1%. Secondary causes include systemic diseases such as diabetes, mellitus, and lupus erythematosus, inflammatory conditions like henoch schoenlein purpura HSP, viral infections, hepatitis B, hepatitis C, HIV, amyloidosis, paraproteinemias, preeclampsia, and exposure to drugs or toxins, including reactions to bee stings or food allergies. Minimal change disease, the most common form of nephrotic syndrome comprising 80%, predominantly affects children aged 1 to 10 years with a male to female ratio of 2.1, presenting with features such as frothy urine, periorbital swelling, and generalized swelling. Characterized by steroid sensitive responses, it is typically benign, lacking macroscopic hematuria, hypertension, or abnormal complement levels. In contrast, Focal segmental glomerulosclerosis, affecting 10%, poses a higher risk of progression to end-stage renal failure, with clinical features including frothy urine, edema, and microscopic hematuria, often associated with familial or idiopathic factors. Meanwhile, membranous nephropathy, common in adults, presents with asymptomatic proteinuria, frothy urine, and swelling potentially progressing to chronic kidney disease, especially when associated with hepatitis B or preceding systemic lupus erythematosus. Mesangiocapillary glomerulonephritis, more prevalent in older children, exhibits a prolonged decline in renal function over years, marked by hematuria, proteinuria, and edema, often leading to chronic kidney disease. Remission in nephrotic syndrome is defined as the absence or trace amounts of urinary protein for three consecutive days. A relapse is characterized by urinary protein excretion of plus three or more for three consecutive days and or the recurrence of edema in a patient who had previously achieved remission. Steroid sensitive nephrotic syndrome is identified by the ability to achieve remission within 28 days of treatment with prednisolone at 60 mg M2. A frequent relapser experiences two or more relapses within a 16-month period or four or more relapses within any 12-month span. Conversely, an infrequent relapser has less than two relapses within a 16-month period or fewer than four relapses within any 12-month period. Steroid dependence is determined by the occurrence of two consecutive relapses while on alternate day prednisolone or within 14 days of its cessation. Steroid resistance is diagnosed when there is a failure to attain remission despite undergoing 28 days of prednisolone treatment. Diagnostic investigations include testing urine protein levels with dipstick analysis, full blood count and ESR, electrolytes, creatinine and albumin, complement levels, anti-streptolysin O or anti-DNA's B titers and a throat swab, urine microscopy and culture. Urinary sodium concentration, hepatitis B and hepatitis C screens, a malaria screen, and renal biopsy. Renal biopsy is indicated in cases of nephrotic syndrome for various reasons, including steroid resistance, primary or secondary, onset of symptoms before six months of age, presence of secondary causes such as rash and arthropathy, deranged renal functions not attributable to hypovolemia. Persistent microscopic hematuria with hypertension, macroscopic hematuria, and low complement C3 and C4 levels. The comprehensive management of nephrotic syndrome involves a combination of symptomatic care, specialized interventions, lifestyle modifications, and regular follow-up. Symptomatic management of nephrotic syndrome involves addressing edema through salt restriction, diuretics, 
IV frusamide, oral spironolactone, and monitoring of serum electrolytes and circulatory status. For refractory edema, IV albumin may be considered with ongoing assessment through daily input-output chart checks, daily weight measurements, and urine protein ward tests. Hypertension is managed with ACE inhibitors or angiotensin receptor blockers accompanied by regular blood pressure monitoring twice a day and evaluation for complications associated with hypertension. Specific treatment for nephrotic syndrome may involve the use of immunosuppressants such as oral prednisolone as well as steroid sparing agents including cyclophosphamide, cyclosporine, mycophenolate mofetil and azathioprine. Prevention strategies in nephrotic syndrome involve measures such as mobilization and compression stockings to mitigate the risk of deep vein thrombosis, DVT, while subcutaneous enoxaparin is administered to further address thrombotic risks. However, prophylactic antibiotics are not recommended for infection prevention. Instead, monitoring of serum creatinine is emphasized. To address hyperlipidemia, lifestyle modifications involve the use of statins, achieving weight reduction to maintain a BMI below 23.5, adopting a normal protein diet, and promoting overall health by ceasing smoking and alcohol consumption. In the follow-up phase, it is essential to monitor various parameters, including serum creatinine, serum electrolytes, urine protein to creatinine ratio, to assess and manage the progression and treatment response of the patient. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more videos.